OK, and um, welcome to lab seven. So um, this week we will learn those essential visual analytic functions in Tableau. And also we will also uh, say that how the Tableau online look like. So there, that is a, a cloud based um, BI tools that is slightly different, different from Tableau desktop. And also the data we are going to use is the COVID-19 data. Uh, so that is from the 1.3 acres dot com. Uh, so this is probably one of the earliest data resource that has uh, the number of cases and also deaths per day um, in the United States and also all over the world. So if you are interested and uh, to request data, you can go to get data and you can fill in a request. OK, um, you can see that a lot of um, institutions are using their data. OK. Uh, for our lab, I already have an API uh, to um, request the data so that the URL was uh, posted on Canvas. So if you go to Canvas and you copy that URL and paste, so that will download the data. Uh, and also be cautious of using the data because uh, this is requested from the 1.3 acres. So there's limitations uh, that there, I think each day you can only send out 100 or 200 requests. So definitely please do not abuse my API that I request from the 1.3 acre. OK, all right now the data set is pretty big. So uh, once that downloading is done, so we can go to our downloads folder. OK, so that the data is called cases. And let's add an extension. So just single cl uh, click and dot CSV. OK, so because that is a CSV file, uh, let's move that one to our uh, OneDrive folder. So um, this will be our lab seven. OK, so let's move that one to our uh, OneDrive folder. And now let's start. Um, uh, so we will connect to our data. So CSV file is considered text file. So let's click text and go to our OneDrive folder. OK, and lab seven and let's select that one CSV file. And if you're interested, you can just update. You can see we have the confirmed dates. So let's just call it date and uh, that is state name which is already recognized as a geographic rule and also that is county. So this is the number of new cases okay, per day and this is the number of the new deaths per day and also this is the number of recoveries okay, per single day. Uh, remember that not all the counties they are reporting recoveries so you may see uh, very small recoveries for some counties. So that is because not all the counties are reporting the recoveries. And this is FIPS. So that is kind of ID for each single county in the US. So and that is a very important um, uh, column that we will use that one later. OK, before we start, let's create an extract so that uh, we will convert the data into extract the data into hyper format so to speed up our uh, queries. Now let's go to sheet and Tableau will ask where do you want to save your extracted file. So let's also save that in the same folder. OK. And let's also save the uh, workbook. So save that one to the same folder. So let's call it a lab seven. Okay. And um, let's also drag FIPS to the dimensions. So because uh, this is should be categorical data. All right. So now we have the data ready. Uh, let's see. Let's see how the trend look like. So let's select dates and also number of the cases. Uh, price control key and let's create a line chart okay so right now you can see uh, we are looking at uh, the date is now uh, recognized as a, 
uh, discrete data. So let's say we want to see the date per day. OK, so here we look at the sum of the cases per day of the month. Uh, because we are looking at the data as a discrete data, so that is the day of different months. OK, so this is the first day of uh, January plus first day of February plus the first day of the March, etc. OK, uh, so we may want to convert the date into continuous so that we can see the trend. So let's convert that one into continuous. OK, and we do see that we have few cases initially in February and also March. And we have a lot of cases that in during the winter and also uh, we see a slight decrease recently. Uh, we can also go back to the into weeks. OK, and also months. OK, or even quarters. Uh, so however, so when you when, when we look at the data at aggregated levels, be cautious that the last data point, for example, the last week, so may not include the data of that entire week. OK, so it doesn't not mean that we have dropped cases in the last week. It just simply means that we don't have the data of, the, of that entire week. OK, so let's go still go to the days. And here we can also try to change the colors. Uh, so for example, if I want to group those points, OK, um, and I can create a set. Oops. So let's see, group those points, create a set. So I can call it so with high cases. OK, and now I can put that set into color. OK, so whether or not they are in the uh, high cases or not. OK, uh, or we can put that state into colors. OK, so that each state will have a unique color and we see definitely there are some date errors. OK, uh, and, and also we can put the, uh, the death into the size, which actually is not recommended. You can see that the number of deaths, so you can also change the size. OK, so you can play with different markers here. But um, and also we can try to add different uh, lines. So for example, if we add an average line. OK, and we can edit that. And let's say we want to show the values. OK, so that means average number of cases per day is this. OK, uh, we can also add uh, a band, for example, that um, for the sum of cases. Okay, and uh, we can see we can from the uh, average to the median. Okay, so that we can see is a data uh, skewed. So it looks like it is because average and also median are. Uh, are highly different, so the data is skewed. Okay, uh, we can also add the other um, uh, reference line reference lines uh, if you like. Uh, so uh, they do have a forecast. Okay, uh, so if you add the forecast, and you can see forecast the cases. However, do not trust the forecast here. I mean, because the pandemic forecasting pandemic require um, very complicated knowledge um, okay, in different domains so that the forecast function in Tableau is a very, very simple. So I would not trust the forecast in Tableau. OK, so just let you know that, yeah, we can do a forecast here, but it does not mean that those forecasts are accurate. OK, uh, let's also try to, to distinguish that the cases that we have a high cases and also low case by using a calculated field. OK, so for example, let's say we create a calculated field. And let's say we call it a case class. OK, and then we see that if uh, the sum of the cases, 
sum of the pieces is greater than let's say 100,000 okay then we all see that is really high cases else I will see that is low and okay so if the sum of cases is greater than 10,000 100,000 and we will see that is high else we will see that is low okay so now we have this calculated field if we bring that one to colors okay and we can see that uh, based on this definition that before November so we have low cases and after November we have high cases okay that is also another way that to change the colors so however we can also create parameters that we can allow user to change the colors so for example here let's say we create a new parameter and this called uh, case level and let's give it a range so let's say uh, uh, minimal will be one maximal let's will be uh, let's give it a very big number uh, probably not that big uh, and also the step let's give it a 100,000 okay so that is case level and let's say we allow the user to control the case level and next let's go to edit the calculated field so here instead of using the fixed number let's use this parameter okay drag the parameter here okay okay so now you can see the case level is one so now we can change that one to um, uh, 100,000 so let's put the first value to be zero okay and also we can increase so that user can decide okay so what what is the threshold of considered high cases or the low cases uh, we may also want to switch the colors so for the low we use blue for the high we use orange okay and now you can see if you change the aggreg aggregation levels to the months okay so that also work okay so let's go back to the days okay um, so not only for the colors we can also change the parameters like for example if we add a reference line for the cases and we can use the, the result that is cases and here we can use a value okay so now if we change the different values okay and we can see we set the threshold that is also updating okay uh, so let's move this one out because that is kind of duplicated to the colors okay next uh, so here we have a line chart and we also want to create a map to show the uh, distribution of the cases so in different counties and also in different states uh, so before we do that we also want to check that so does every county has an FIPS so let's bring the FIPS okay and let's see count we, we see we have a lot of non values so let's fill out all the results let's just keep non values and let's see how many records have the non values okay so we see we have this number of records that they have the non values and so before we create a uh, maps so let's see that what of records do have non values so let's bring the counties back all right so it turns out that some records that are classified as unassigned have the non FIPS which makes sense we also have the out of state that uh, not in the US I guess and also Puerto Rico uh, inmates the hospitals staff okay so that means that we do have some 
data set that uh, not belong to a county, I think. So that's why they don't have the FIPS. OK, so um, this is just one way that to make sure that help you better understand the quality of the data. OK, so looks like OK, so for most of the counties, we do have an FIPS. So, um, let me edit the filter. So let's say I want to exclude. And you can see for most of the counties, they do have FIPS. OK, so that's nice to know. All right, so now let's say we want to create a map that is to show the number of the cases. Uh, so you can see by default, Arcgen, uh, Tableau already have this hierarchy. So if I click the state and also the cases, Let's use a field in map or core class map. We can see at a state level, so number of cases per state. And since we have this uh, uh, hierarchy, so if I zoom in and I can see at the county level, okay, uh, we, we do see that the, uh, the number of cases per county. All right, uh, so let, we can also change the color. So let's say we want to change a diverging color. OK, uh, and we may want to reverse the color. OK, so that blue shows low cases and also orange shows high cases. All right, so now we have a color that per uh, state, if you like, and also we can zoom in that is per county. So here we have an issue that we know that uh, because there are a lot of counties that have fewer cases, lower cases, but they all have similar color, similar colors because uh, Los Angeles has a lot of cases so that it's very hard to tell uh, the situation in other counties. Uh, so here, let's say we cr uh, to resolve this issue so we can create a set. Okay, so first let's put uh, FIPS also into the details. We know that each county that has a unique FIPS. Uh, let's also fill out data that do not have locations. OK, and let's create a set based on the FIPS. OK, so create a new set. Uh, let's call it, let's use all the values and let's call it selected counties okay so now by default all the counties are selected and based on this set let's create a new calculated field let's see case uh, selected cases okay so set can be used as a filter so we see if that county has been selected then we will retain the number of the cases. And OK, so if that county being selected, we will retain the number of cases and we click OK. So now instead of using the, the cases, we are using the, the selected cases. OK, and again, let's change the color uh, to the diverging color schema. OK. You can see right now we still have the similar uh, issues that uh, we cannot see the details of those counties because they have they all fill in the, the same range of the blue range. Uh, so now we, but we are using we are showing the colors colors of the counties that are selected in this set. So now let's add a uh, action an action. So let's go to worksheet and see actions. So right now we don't have any actions. Let's add action. We can change. Let's change the set values and make sure we are using the current sheet. The set is show colors. So we call that action show colors. Um, so we can see for we are using a key state source and a set will be the selected counties. So when we select those counties will assign value to the set. And when we clear the selection, we'll add all values to the set. 
OK, so that is the action. So now click OK, OK. So let's see what will happen. So now if you select those counties, we can see that we are only show the colors for those counties. OK, so that is very nice to show the pattern. So for example, now I'm interested in uh, Virginia. So let's see, show the cases in Virginia. So now we can see that in Northern Virginia, and also DC, we have a higher number of the cases. OK, so this is also a very nice feature that to allow you to show the cases at in specific areas. So if, for example, it's very hard to see the uh, the, the pattern that um, globally, so you can just highlight specific areas. So let's say here we want to see the uh, number of cases per state by using a bar chart. So let's create a new. Uh, sheet and select state and also cases and choose bar chart and now if you sort based on axis and so we are sorting the sum of the cases per state uh, we can also choose we want to sort based on alphabetic order okay or if we want to sort based on the sum of cases per state we can even sort based on other field that not in the view. So for example, if you want to sort by the death, okay, and we can also do that. Okay, uh, so now if you zoom in, or if you drill down, and we can see, uh, we can also sort um, that within each state, okay, so which cities has the uh, highest number of the cases. So right now we are using a nested sort. Okay, so um, by default it is using a nested sort. That is that it means that within each state, which city has or county has highest cases. Uh, we can also switch that to a field sort. Okay, uh, so that means that uh, we so that all the cities will have the same sort in different states. Okay. So, for example, if I drag counties uh, in front of states, we can see the orders will not change, okay? Because we have some county that have the same name all over different states, okay? Uh, so let's just use the the nested sort. And if some cases you got confused, you can always go here and also clear the sorts, okay? So that is tried different sorts. Uh, let's also bring the, the sum of deaths here. So here you can see we can also sort by deaths instead of the cases. Okay. Um, so here we have very, very long list. Let's say we want to use filters to filter out the states and also the counties. So let's put state into the filter. Let's say we add, we want all the values and let's see we show the filter um uh, let's say we want to use a single value drop down okay so here you can choose different uh, states let's also bring the county into the um, filter so we can just directly show counties okay and here let's say we want to use uh uh, multi values drop down. Let's bring that one beneath the states. Okay. Uh, so right now we see we have very, very long list because that concludes all the counties. Uh, so we can modify that one. Okay. And uh, we see we want just use only relevant values. Okay. So that means if we choose uh, uh, like Arizona. And now we only have the uh, counties that in the current view. OK, so that's very nice. However, you should be cautious of using those filters. So if you add too many filters, and especially if you choose only relevant values, so uh, the performance might be um, pretty low. All right. Uh, we also mentioned the tool tips in our previous labs. So here, for example, uh, we can go to drop down and we can customize those tool tips. So, for example, let's just uh, put the state first. Okay, county the second. 
OK, and we can also change those values. OK, and we can also insert the other sheet in this uh, in this uh, tool tip. Sorry, this is tool tip. So for example, here we can insert our first sheet. That is a line chart. And let's change the size. So let's say we give it 500 and for the width and also 400 for the height. OK, and we're using all fields. So fields mean that we have filled out the line chart based on the state and also county. OK, so now let's see how the tool tip looks like. OK, so now you can see we are looking at different uh, counties. OK, and also we can see the trend. OK, and if we just look at the state and we can see the trend for different states. So let's say we see all the states. OK, so that is pretty nice. OK, uh, so let's add another uh, sheet. Let's say we want to bring cases and also deaths at the state level. OK, and we see that uh, uh, let's rotate that one. So here we can see California and also New York has a lot of deaths and also cases. So for example, if we look at New York and explain the data, uh, we can see to, for the sum of, of the deaths, that is because on average, on each single day, New York has very high average deaths. So on each single day that we have 2.5 deaths. We also have some extremely values. So let's say that in New York, OK, and in, uh, in April, there are 4,000 deaths on, on that single day in New York County. So that contributes a lot of deaths in New York State. The same reason for cases, we can see in April and New York County has almost more than 8,000 cases. So that contributes why New York State has a lot of cases. OK, so that is explain data. Um, and also, you can also open this one as a, a standalone chart, so where you can uh, further explore those data here. OK, so let's go back to our uh, sketch plot. Uh, so here you can try to add some different uh, analytic tools. For example, uh, you can add trend lines. See that how the deaths is related to the uh, cases. Uh, we can also expand it from the state level to county level. OK, so that we can bring more dots, more uh, data points so that we, uh, to change and uh, to see the trend lines. OK, and of course, you can try the other uh, uh, lines here. So let's move this one and go back to state. Uh, we can also try use clustering. So for example, if we cluster the data, OK, and let's say we want to use three groups and also automatically we have three clusters. OK, so here we can see that uh, California, Texas, New York and also Florida are those states that have high number of cases and also high number of deaths. And we can see the other states, those states uh, have middle number of cases and also deaths. OK, relatively speaking, I mean, and those states have lower, uh, relatively speaking, lower number of cases and the deaths. Uh, we can also export the result of the clustering, keying clustering as a group. OK, so here let's say we call it state class. And we can edit that group. We can see for class three, those are the four states. So let's rename this one as high. I mean, relatively speaking. And those states, we can rename that middle. And those states, we can rename that as uh, low. OK, uh, so now if we go back to this uh, bar chart, and we can apply those colors. OK, uh, let's drag 
needle here and let's also uh, reassign those colors so let's use colorblind safely color um, for high we use this one for middle let's use this one and for low let's use this one okay so now we can see the states okay and if so I'm interested in VA, so let's see how the VA look like. Okay, so VA now is in this relatively speaking lower group. And now if I just want to look at Harrisonburg and also Richmond. So Harris, uh, so let's say Harrisonburg and Richmond. Okay, and now if I move my mouse, I can see the trend in those cities and also in those counties. Okay, I think that's enough for the uh, visual analytics that we have covered. Uh, so we talked about the sort, uh, the different reference lines, um, how we can create a set, parameters, um, and also groups, and also we can customize the tool tip, um, etc. Um, so let's upload this uh, worksheet to Tableau online. So let's first save it locally. Okay, so let's say we want to share the workbook with our colleagues. So to do that, we can share that uh, on Tableau online. Uh, so first we have to sign in and let's choose Tableau online. And you do need a license for Tableau online. So uh, we already have that. And so here you can sign in with your Tableau Online account. Okay. And once we sign in, and we can upload our workbook, publish our workbook, and also we can publish our data source, depending whether or not you have permission to do that. Uh, so let's just publish our workbook. Okay, and you can choose which group you are in. So for the uh, and also make sure that when you publish that one, use your first name, last name, and also lab seven. Okay, uh, you can uh, also set the permissions. So for example, if you, whether or not you want the others to view your data, etc. So let's just keep that as a, a default one. And let's publish. Okay, so by doing so, so um, the other folks can also view your data and also your worksheet on Tableau online. Okay, so now if I go to uh, Tableau online, okay, and I go to explore and also, uh, so here I can see um, this is the worksheet I just shared. So now if I open it, so I can check each single sheet Okay, and I can also use those uh, parameters that we defined. Okay, let's see the map. Okay, so they are working. Okay, and let's look at the chart, uh, the bar chart. Okay, and if you like, you can also edit uh, your sheet on Tableau Online, which uh, just the similar interface as Tableau Desktop, but uh, with a little bit slightly different functions. For example, the clustering is not uh, supported on Tableau Online. Okay, however, there's a new feature on Tableau Online that is not in Tableau Desktop, which is called ask data. So for example, here we do have the cases that I already up uploaded. So if we check this uh, cases data, and we can ask data. So for example, we can see uh, which state has the highest deaths. Okay. Now the, the, 
they can give you the sum of deaths by state. Okay, best state with highest deaths, etc. So let's just choose the first one. And they will create a visualization for you. Okay, so depending on the data that you selected. And in this case, you can say they create a map. Okay. And you can also uh, run the other, uh, try the other uh, questions. And let's say that the top county with highest uh, cases. OK, uh, so let's try the top county by some of the cases. OK, so that is Los Angeles, Okay, which is a bar chart. Uh, 